Kathy Klotz, Executive Director of Intermountain Therapy Animals and Reading Education Assistance Dogs, the Reed Program. Reed was born in November of 1999 when we first brought therapy dogs into the Salt Lake City Library to be reading companions for children. We knew we were onto something great, but we really had no idea what a journey it would be and how the program would capture the hearts and minds of children and adults worldwide. The Reed program is respected and endorsed by educators, librarians, parents, and kids everywhere. It has literally spread around the world, reaching thousands of children throughout the United States, into Canada, the United Kingdom, Europe, and as far away as South Africa and Slovenia. Our continuing efforts to introduce children to the joys of reading and books help to lay the foundation for a lifetime. Succeeding at reading is vital to children's eventual success at school, on the job, in socioeconomic achievement, and even to their health. We've learned a lot over the years and we're always eager to learn more and share it. So we're pleased to bring you this series of videos designed to help handlers in their ongoing quest for succeeding at reading. More read programs happen in libraries than any other setting. In this video, Karen Burns, Assistant Director of ITA, discusses all the elements to help you build a successful library program. Today we're going to talk to you about how to set up a successful read program in your local library. Now if you remember, under the Animal Assisted Interactions, there are two categories. There's Animal Assisted Activities and there's Animal Assisted Therapy. If we were doing read at school, that would be considered Animal Assisted Therapy. But for a library setting, it's going to be Animal Assisted Activities. So these visits are going to be motivational, educational, fun, entertaining. It's going to be one more reason to get kids to the library and discovering books. The first thing you're going to want to do is establish a contact person. That might be the children's librarian, it might be the manager of youth services, or it might just be the library director or manager. It also might be summer programs. Many times if we can't get into a library with a regular ongoing program, they may want to start with just a four to six week summer program. So establish contact first. And once you have that, you're going to set up your first initial meeting. At this meeting, you're going to bring lots of resources um, to leave with the library and also to, to show them more about your own local organization. Um, we recommend bringing these read brochures with you. They're full of lots of information about how the program works. You can order these from Read Headquarters. We also recommend this video, Read at the Library. This is a great short little video about how a read program would work in your library. You can order these from Read Headquarters and you can also go to YouTube and view them online. We also recommend that you bring any of your own local newsletters, so any, any resources you have that will help get the library familiar with your group and your volunteers. We want you to just remember that some people are not going to think this is a great idea for a library. There's going to be concerns about safety, allergies. They may just think it's a stupid idea. Any kind of concern that you might hear from the library, we suggest that you always remember to first agree with those concerns. So always say, oh yes, I understand allergies could be a concern. And here's what we're going to do to make sure our animals are not shedding too much. We're going to groom them with um, nature's miracle dirt and dander to cut down on allergens. And so always agree with whatever their concern might be. The customer is always right. It's kind of a principle we go by. So hopefully that first initial meeting will be um, very successful and go well and they will want to proceed further with setting up a program. Um, at which point you have the job of recruiting volunteers. Um, hopefully you've already got three or four volunteers lined up to volunteer at that library. So the next part is building that relationship with the librarian. Any kind of read program in a library is going to be more successful with um, a great support system with the library. We're going to need them to control the crowds. We're going to need the librarian to sign up people as they come in. Um, they will have fun setting up the environment um, for your read team. So it's just really important to have a supportive librarian. If you find that you're not getting that support, 
we might even suggest you look at another library because to have a successful program, it's going to need that, that supportive system from the library. So you now have um, a supportive librarian. You have the volunteers you've recruited for the program. The next step would be to set up a second meeting. And at this meeting, you're going to be the volunteers that are going to be working at the program. You're going to bring a facility agreement, which you can find in the read forum and you're going to meet with your supportive librarian and take a walk through the library discuss where the best location is for the program oftentimes a quiet corner in the children's area works well but we're open to anything that the library thinks would be best another alternative is to invite the librarian to a read workshop we've had several librarians come to ours and it's been helpful so they really get an idea of how the program can work best now that you've got the agreement signed and the location set up, we're going to get ready to start the program. As a read volunteer, your role as a handler is going to expand beyond being your animal's advocate because you're going to direct the session without the immediate presence of a professional. You still need to advocate for your dog and you also need to facilitate the reading session with the child. Remember to always focus questions on the dog. An educator named William Ayers says, fear can destroy intelligence. And we've all been there. We've all experienced that personally, and we've seen children experience that. First, put their fears at ease. Um, take time to introduce the dog to your child. Um, take time that they feel comfortable with your dog. We're going to start the session now. We recommend that you define your space. You might use a blanket like this or something else that you have. You want to arrange your settings, so if you've selected a quiet little corner, you can lay your blanket out. Um, I recommend that you bring a sign like this, which is also in your read manual, to help prevent interruptions. I will have my blanket laid out and my sign in the front, so when those interruptions happen, um, like we saw in the read video, we can just point to that sign and hand them a brochure and try not to interrupt the child's time with your dog. I also have business cards that I will set out in my place so if people wanted more information they could take a card. Another helpful thing in our read manual are the coloring pages, says Reader of the Pack. I often have a stack of those sitting at a table nearby with some crayons in case there's kids coming with their siblings that are just too young to read, it just gives them something to do so that they're not interrupting the session. You're ready to start. Know your time boundaries. Sometimes at a library, you might get 15 to 20 minutes with a child if just a few have showed up that day. Um, other times, you might really need to limit the sessions to 10 minutes apiece or even less because we want to try to get each child that special time with your dog. So know your time boundaries. And remember, it's up to you to keep track of ending those sessions on time. Take time to introduce yourself, introduce your dog. I find it helpful to remind the child that they can interact with your dog. I often will suggest holding part of the book so that the other hand on the child is free to pet. Take a few minutes to say all that and get them a little bit more comfortable. I've also found it important to let the child know how much um, training your dog's been through. I've, I've had some kids approach my dog that are a little fearful, so let them know that your dog is going to be real safe with them. And also let them know how much your dog enjoys books and hearing stories. During the session, remember a few things. Remember it's a fishbowl. By fishbowl, we mean it's a public setting. No touching or hugging. Now, of course, if a child run, runs up and hugs you, that's going to be okay. But we wouldn't want to be the one as a volunteer to run up and hug the child. So remember, anything can be perceived from the public, either good or bad. Keep it fresh. Stay spontaneous. Use humor, laughter, patience. You might hear the same story over and over and over at a library. And you have to pretend that you enjoy it each time. There's a number of ways that you can build on your dog's personality. When I was reading with my Great Dane, I discovered these books called Pinkerton. We had a lot of fun with Pinkerton Adventures. There's all types of these books um, with different storylines for Pinkerton. Then I went to working with a rabbit and I had to start discovering rabbit books. 
And again, there was just a number of fun rabbit books that I would bring to the library and have fun with the rabbit. And kids love that. So you can find books on just about any breed that you have. And we have a book list available in the read manual. And we update that periodically and put that in the read forum for you as well. Okay, remember to protect your dog while you're facilitating. Remember careful listening. We always want to know right where a child is in the book. So if they struggle, we can help them when struggling so that the experience remains positive and not more frustrating for the child. Never hesitate to teach them new words. I find it fun to have a dictionary nearby, especially a big children's dictionary. So if they are struggling with a word, we can just take a minute and look it up and kind of have fun that way learning new words together. And again, we're going to speak through our dog. So Maggie is kind of curious what that word means. Do you think we should look it up for her? Um, always monitor comprehension. You want to make sure they understand what they're reading, that they're not reading too fast and going through it that they're missing the meaning. We don't want to dominate the situation. We want to um, make it a fun, positive experience. So participate enthusiastically, but don't dominate the session. Be ready for interruptions. We've already talked about that. Be ready because the parents tend to be the ones that interrupt. So have your sign. Remember to point at that and have your brochures available. Always, always just be flexible and go with the flow. It can be really fun if you teach your dog focused attention and that helps the child think that your dog is really listening and enjoying the story and it's pretty easy to teach. When I worked with my Great Dane, I used this book about Great Danes because she loved herself. <laughs> um, and all I did was I took a little treat, a little training treat like this will work and if you just insert it, several of them, into your book and you start reading the book and then your dog is sitting next to you and when you turn the page and there's a treat there and you say, look, and quickly, very quickly, the dog will start looking at that page. And you read a couple more pages and magically another one appears and you say, look, Maggie. And so it only takes a couple of times of doing that and your dog will be staring at that book hoping something magical happens. So parent participation. What about parents and how they're involved in the read program? Each situation is going to look a little bit different. So you may have a very enthusiastic parent that wants to participate in the session. And maybe they brought their toddlers and they would like to come and sit down and read the book to their toddler. We're totally fine with that. That's a great way for a child to interact with the dog and the parent to enjoy the session and reading is happening and the bond is happening. So of course, parents are welcome to participate. Every once in a while, you may end up with that interruptive parent, the one that continues to ask questions while the child is reading to your dog. Um, in that case, you may take a minute and, and ask them to sit a little bit further. Um, if you know this is going to happen at your library, you might have a separate seating um, area for the parents so that they can still be close by but not actually in the session. So again, monitor that on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, it's very individual. Okay, so now we've had the session. We're ready to end the session. This is sometimes hard because the kids don't want to end the session. So it's best if you can have the child help close the session. Um, maybe that is offering a little treat. Maybe it's a high five. Maybe it's giving them a sticker or a bookmark have some idea in mind of how you're going to end those sessions. And then we can always suggest they practice reading with their own pet at home. In general, a lot of people will tell you, my dog will never sit that quietly. Um, and that's a good opportunity su to suggest a cat because people's own cats do enjoy reading with them. So after the session, you want to update your notes and talk about what worked, what didn't work. I think it's important to write down the kids' names that I read with. So when they do show up the next time, whether that's a week later, could be two weeks or three weeks later, you still know that child's name. And follow up with the appropriate parties at the library to explore new ideas or to talk about what worked or what didn't work and get those questions answered. So now, what read teams are not? It's not trick, click, or treat time. So it's not the time that you want to start showing all the greatest tricks that your dog can do or how your dog can catch a frisbee. We're not going to entertain a crowd at the library because this is a specific read session. 
it is not a babysitting service. It's really important when you set up the program that you make sure the librarian knows this. And sometimes um, you're still going to have parents that show up with three kids and try to walk away. So try to stay aware of that, that that might happen, and quickly tell them, oh, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to just leave your child here. We need you to stay close by. Um, but be prepared for that to happen and make sure you can stop it before it does. That might be another good reason to have a volunteer there without an animal. It's been really helpful in some of our library settings to have a volunteer that can be that crowd control and intervene when a parent is about to leave a child. So something else to think about. Remember, um, in the read setting, read is all about relationships. So it's going to get personal with the child and your dog and yourself. Boundary issues can arise. If you're at the library and a child needs a ride home because their parents did leave, you, you can never do that. You need to remember to keep the boundaries clear and appropriate. We don't want to bring gifts to the sessions for, our, for the kids that are coming. Um, we don't want to take them on walks with our dog outside. We have to just keep very clear boundaries. So we also have some fun things you can bring to a program. Many of our libraries have bookmarks called Dog Day Afternoons. They just have them sitting out in the library, so it's kind of a way to advertise the program and also could be a way to end the session. We also have stickers that say, I read to, and you can put in your dog or cat or bunny, your therapy animals picture on there, and that's another fun way to end a session where a child gets to leave with a sticker that says, I read to Maggie today. And I just want to thank you for listening to this video. I have been lucky enough to do Reed for 14 years with my Great Dane and then my Rabbit and now my Miniature Dachshund. And for me, it's one of my favorite settings because I love kids, books, and animals. Um, so for me, there's no better arrangement. Um, I think the kids have really learned to enjoy books and, and become more eager to discover new children's books. So their benefits are great among the participants as well as the handlers. So thank you for your commitment to children and to literacy and the power and value of the human-animal bond. Happy reading. Always remember that your biggest key to success will be in collaboration, being on your library's team. That means addressing all potential concerns in advance, responding quickly to solve problems if they occur, and always letting them know that you care about the health, safety, and positive experience of their clients just as much as they do. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll check out the other videos in our Succeeding at Reading series. If you have questions, we're happy to help. Please contact us at any time. From all of us at Intermountain Therapy Animals, thank you for your time and dedication to becoming an ever more skilled read team. Special thanks to Pia and Jimmy Zankel and the Laura J. Niles Foundation, whose generous support of Reed makes this series possible.